Good day and welcome to another time of Bible study. The hymn writer Henry William Baker said, Lord, your word abideth, and our footsteps guideth. Who is truth to receive it? Light and joy receive it. We want to trust God that the word of the Lord that will come our way will bring light and joy to our life. That the truth of his word will impact our life even as we study today and all of us will be blessed by reason of his word that forever abides. Today, we'll be looking at the characteristics of ungodly leaders. Remember last week we considered the character of injustice as one of the salient, um, do I use the word, not virtue, salient vice that defines an ungodly ruler. Today, one of such characters is also selfishness, and that's what we'll be discussing today. That will form the kernel of our today's discussion. Under the sub team, characteristics of ungodly rulers, and then under the general team for the year, the Lord God and the reign of peace. I remain your anchor, Chukwebuka Ejekam. With me in the studio, our resource persons, our fathers in the Lord, whom the Lord has prepared for today's discussion. By my right is the Reverend Chukunanya Maxwell Njoko. Is the priest from the Diocese of the Niger, All Saints Cathedral on Niger. Father in God, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, Lianko. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers, you're welcome. Please sit back and enjoy the Bible study with us. God has a word for you today. Amen. And then by my left is the Reverend Daniel Okudele Amoke. He's a priest, Diocese of Unsoka Anglican Communion as well as the vicar in charge of Christ Church, a hard worker under the Diocese of Nsoka. He's also the Diocese and AYF chaplain. chaplain. Father and God, you're welcome to the program. God bless you. You're yeah. welcome. The Rendan, yes. I, I, we remember those days. These are the people who mentored us in the university while we are still members of the Anglican Student Fellowship mm -hmm. in UNN. God it's good you. to see you working in God's vineyard. Thank, Thank you. you, and may the Lord bless you. Thank you. Our aims today will be to identify reasons for selfishness in the society. And then secondly, to discuss the consequences of selfishness on the governed. Two aims. Reasons why we have pervasive selfishness. I would like to add that adjective in the society today. And then to discuss the consequences of selfishness on the government. Quickly, Reverend Dan, sir, you help us read our test. Second Chronicles chapter 10, 4 to 16, quickly. Remember to invite everybody around. Get your notes, get your writing materials. Like our Father and God, Reverend Maxwell said, God has a word for you today. Second Chronicles 10, 4 to 16, sir. Right, Second Chronicles 10, from verse 4. Thy father made are you grievous. Now therefore, is thou somewhat the grievous servitude of thy father, and his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Come again unto me after three days. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam took counsel with the old man, that had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, What counsel give ye me to return answer to these people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou be kind to these people, and please them, and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel with which the old man gave him, and took counsel with the young men that were brought up with him. They stood before, that stood before him. And he said unto them, What advice give ye that we may return answer to these people, which have spoken to me, saying, Is somewhat the yoke that thy father did put upon us? And the young man that we are brought up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou answer the people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but Make thou it somewhat lighter for us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. For whereas my father put a heavy yoke upon you, I will put more to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, 
as the king as the king bade, saying, Come again to me on the third day. And the king answered them roughly, and King Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men, and answered them after the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add thereto. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was of God, that the Lord might perform his word, which he spake by the hand of Abijah Ahijah, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king would not hearken unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? And we have none inheritance in the sons of Jesse. Every man to your tents, O Israel. And now David, see to thine own house. So all Israel went to their tents. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. For me, very painful ending. What portion do we share in David? What inheritance have we in the son of David? Every man to your tent, O Israel. Now see to your house, O David. You see what selfishness can cause, can cause disunity even amongst brethren. Introduction quickly. Selfishness is being unconcerned excessively or exclusively with one's own interests. It is seeking or concentrating only on one's advantage. This attitude is based on the desire to gratify self and not having empathy with the plight of people in need and poverty or the oppressed in the society. You know, we talk about the vulnerable, the weak in the society. In our text, Rehoboam chose the foolish advice of his contemporaries against the wise counsel of the elders because of his selfish ambition that lacked empathy for the people he was to rule. How can we overcome the evil of selfishness as Christian leaders in all aspects of life? The study today will shed more light on the subject of selfishness. For me, the question to begin already to ponder is how can we overcome the evil of selfishness as Christian leaders, leaders in school, leaders in home, fathers at home, mothers at home, children, political leaders who are Christian, how can we overcome this evil in all aspects of our life? And we are trusting the Lord that as we begin to discuss, the Lord will unearth and bring answers to these questions in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father in God, Reverend Njoko, would like to um, direct the first question to you. From the study context, define selfishness and analyze the basis for it. For emphasis, you will just have to read Second Chronicles again, chapter 10, and read only verse 10, as well as 13 to 14, quickly. Second Chronicle 10, verse 10. The young men who had grown up with him replied, The people have said to you, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Verse 13. The king answered them harshly, rejecting the advice of the elders. He followed the advice of the young men and said, My father made your yoke heavy. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. So what is selfishness, dear Father and God, and what is the basis for it from this scripture? From this context, you can say that selfishness is the quality or state of being selfish. Yes, my Lord. It is a concern hmm. for oneself, hmm. one's welfare, his advantage at the expense and disregard of others. Hmm. It is one putting excessive interest on himself, devout of caring of others. What is at the basis? The basis for this is 
self gratification yes sir what do i get from here if everybody should die i'm the only person alive yeah it's okay i'll continue to live thinking that others does not matter, matter. that yes, what sir. matters is me and my household me and my interest me and my advantage what do i get in return of this hmm. whenever we begin to think that we are more important than others that our welfare our health our why anything that me first counts first before, forth before any other person you see that that is selfishness yes. character manifesting concern and care for oneself other than the other and those who are in leadership have sworn to carry everybody along Look. not just themselves but this is a mandate of the people hmm. though here we are looking at an uh, 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 maybe an oligarchy not not an oligarchy this is a uh, 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 it's a monarchy. A monarchy. Yeah, it's a monarchy. A monarchy. You, 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 it is still the mandate of the people. Mm. It is the people who ask you to be there. It is the people you are going to lead. And primarily, your concern should be the welfare, the, the interest of the, the people. people. When you happen. get the interest of the people, your throne is secured. Awesome. You know, what, this last word you said, you know, when I read Mordecai, that very last chapter, I think chapter 10 of Esther, something struck me, that his greatness was hinged on the fact that he sought for the welfare of Jews. Of, yes. I think verse 3, 4 of that Esther chapter 10. So, just like Father and God is saying, when you begin to position your interest and your interest alone, your throne will not last. Father and God, your take, selfishness. Selfishness, just like... Uh, Reverend Mark said, very bad, especially when leaders exhibit it. Hmm. Because it shows insensitivity to the plight of the people. Hmm. And most times in contemporary world, um, leaders come to represent the interest of the people. Exactly. Sometimes with an oath, even lifting up the scripture, the Bible, and taking an oath. During swearing in. During the... swearing in, and even during campaign, hmm. they will tell you, I am going to represent your interests in this, in this, in this. At the end of the day, they take up that throne by the mandate of the people, and then they now fight or seek only for their own Advantage. advantages, ignoring the interest of those who put you in that office. It is very bad. Hmm. Insensitivity the plight of the people. Understanding that your rulership or your governance, the power that you have, you know we practice representative governance, comes from the people. Don't lose the trust of the people. Let's look at question two. Critically examine, Reverend Dancer, the attitude of Rehu Puam and discuss any similarities with our contemporary rulers, politicians, pastors and captains of industry no references but we can speak to this we can even speak in a temple <laughs> what is what can we draw from the attitude of rehoboam and can we paint some similarities with contemporary rulers it's okay um rehoboam it was obvious from the text we read that he told the people plainly i am not going in fact what my father the did is a child's play. It's a child's play. It's a tip of iceberg compared to what I'm going to, mm. to, to do to you. Mm. What so a savage response. Exactly. It wasn't good at all for a leader to have even told his people that he's representing in that, mm. address them in that way. Then, today, our leaders do worse. Our leaders do worse. Let me begin with political leaders. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they are the low hanging fruit. They are the easiest person you can yes. meet. <laughs> you know, our, our, our political leaders are representing us in government. They tell us that um, our, our, our rights or what belongs to us from the government, they are going to bring back to us. Our roads, they have responsibility to repair it. Hmm. They give us fireborne water. They, they give us good schools. Infrastructure, generally, they provide for us. But it is so painful when they occupy that office that they send their children, for instance, to schools abroad, abroad. 
where they will be taken good care of, where they will be taught and groomed academically, and then back here. So our people schools don't have will be, classrooms. Don't have classrooms, infrastructure dilapidate, and nobody is looking at that. This is one thing. Even hospitals, the health them. sector, they everywhere, do again medical care abroad. Everywhere. The, the pensioners and the salary, uh, uh, workers, their salaries are denied and, and they are their own families are being taken good care of abroad. And those people who, who are here... Who have spent years, years serving the state. The state. Nothing is being done to them. You know, it is very bad. My, my concern, especially those of us who are Christian leaders, let the word of God encounter our hearts and give us that heart of flesh so that peradventure you are preparing to get into the race for 2023 to make sure that you are going there to serve. Now, we talked about politicians. You know, let's come back to our constituency, pastors. What can we draw from contemporary pastors in our time? We have people who are selfish even in ministry. Yeah. Just your word as we prepare. Yes, uh, there are uh, still. I hope I'm not putting you on the spot. No, so. <laughs> there are still Rehoboam's on a uh, suit, on castle, and uh, they are not far fetched. The examples are there. Yes, sir. You hear about schools hmm. built contributed, the monies were contributed by all the members of the church. And at the end of the day, those who contributed mo that money, their children, cannot, cannot possibly and will never attend such schools. They are now meant for the elites. Hmm. This congregant stroll some, don't have bicycle, and the Rehoboam's Uses the fleets. In <laughs> yes, uses <laughs> fleets of uh, private jets, mm. protect their interests, go on board gas, and when they tell, pray for the members and they say, Oh, my God will bless you, you are secured. And you see that Rehoboam that prays for others, Good. using military men, using mm. police and to SSS guide. to guide himself, it shows that. His own interest, interest advantage huh. is more paramount than the interest of the others. More so, when we come to committees sometimes, when you talk about the issue of welfare, some pastors will, when it is their own welfare, it will welfare. come early. Mm. But when it is the welfare <laughs> of maybe the junior worker, the uh, other member on the pew that uh, the son is 5,000, the money is not there. <laughs> but when the man wants to go to conference, the money is He's there. That's uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, you see in some dioceses, where we hear uh, the bishop goes abroad every week, whereas the, the junior workers are not paid. Selfishness. Hmm. The Lord indeed will help us. It cuts across. Yeah. It's just for us to be disciples, true disciples of Jesus. You know, I heard they asked, we prepared to get to break. One of our church fathers, sometime many years ago, was in our church. Then I was a parishioner, just an everyday parishioner in St. James and Sokoro here. And he was sharing with us. He said, a particular vicar in charge. Many experience you get when you work in the Lord's Vineyard. People will always come for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, sometimes they carry goats, they carry this, and then the man will just carry the goats in and be enjoying it. So, one of the days, one of the curates under him must have courage and say, Ah, Vika, this thing that people bring here, uh, we under you. It seems as if you've forgotten us. And the, the minister who was preaching in church shared with us a very funny story. He said the priest, the vicar in charge now promised him, the next Thanksgiving service, whatever they bring, I will give you, you are going to take. Perhaps he thought the next Thanksgiving service, the person will be coming with chicken and uh, yam and everything. Yeah, so, fortunately or unfortunately, very funny story. The next Thanksgiving in church, the person now brought cow. Very big, mighty cow, even more than good. And the vicar had to tell the curate, you know, just give me one more, one more service. Well, Let me do he just thought of, I mean, mm. just that cow alone and he went. No, I'll say to him, <laughs> wait for your turn. <laughs> <laughs> so but but yeah, that's not why we are in ministry. Yes, yes. yes that's not why we are in ministry. Yeah. But so, these things are good and when they come, you appropriate it. Exactly. 
You know, the, 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 the speaker was just using that to share experiences of sometimes how people could be selfish even in the Lord's vineyard. Principally, that's not the reason why we are ministry and we are not promoting such here. But it goes to show that we as men of God, we as political leaders, in the different spheres of influence where God has promised, has uh, carved out for us to operate, we should think of others, we should empathize. But we say, let this mind be in you, which was also so in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Though being God, he never counted the quality with God as something to be grasped. You know, that scripture, each time I quote it, the part that excites me most is that verse 10 following. Mm -hmm. He said, because of this, God gave him a name mm -hmm. that and is above every other name. name. You will have a name when you are selfish. Posterity will remember you when you are selfish. As a leader, as a clergy, even as a lady. We'll be back in a moment to continue. God bless you. Now streaming, now analyzing, now assessing, now discussing, now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you. ACNN is now streaming, discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all. Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities, and our country. Welcome back. Remember today we've been considering characteristics of ungodly rulers and we're looking at selfishness. A very evil vice that can destroy relationship and destroy families. Now we want to look at question three, but before then, remember also that I've been in the studio with our resource persons, the Reverend Chukunanya Maxwell and Joko, and the Reverend Daniel Okudele Amoke. Welcome to the program once again. Thank you very Thank much. You. What are the possible consequences of selfish rulership with reference to Nigeria? You will help us read, Reverend Njoko, sir, 2 Chronicles chapter 10, 16 to 19, quickly. And then Reverend Amoke, Matthew chapter 25, 45 to 46. 2 Chronicles 10, verse 16. When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, What share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son? To your tent, Israel, look after your own house, David. So all Israelites went home. But as for the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah, Rehoboam still rule over them. King Rehoboam sent out Adoram, who was in charge of forced labor. But the Israelites stoned him to death. King Rehoboam, however, managed to get into his chariot and escape to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Hmm. This Tragic. is the word of God. Thanks be to Thanks God. God. Matthew 25, 41 to 46. Reverend Amoke, sir. All right, from verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cost into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we the unhungered, or attest, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he say unto them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous into eternal. eternal life. So quickly, Father in God, possible consequences of selfish rulership, looking at this context, the reference scriptures we've read. Yes, he said we should reference to Nigeria. The first consequence is uh, civic disobedience. Hmm. 
When you look at the breadth and length of our nation today, you hear about people taking laws into, into their, their hands. Splinter groups. Yes. What you call a uh, boundary, what you call uh, terrorism, ESN. ESN, and the rest of them, uh, all this agitation of one thing or the other, as a result of selfish Fish. leadership. Hmm. Selfish leadership, like in Israel, rebellion came up immediately. Hmm. They stoned Adram, and the king managed to escape with his life. And you hear that ah, this governor nearly escaped. Hmm. This senator escaped. Assassination attempt on this. Hmm. This is the first level. Hmm. Two, there is poverty in the land. And poverty brings anger, lack of social amenities, because what is meant for all, all. has been amassed on, by, by a few number of persons hmm. who fly on the air and move on siren. There is lack of... And talk about the perennial sous strike. Yes. The investment in education is poor. It's over yeah, two months now. Up to the 26% that UNESCO recommended. Okay. Why small African countries are doing better than better us? Than and we that. are supposed to be the giant and, uh, and the least of it is now you hear about each ethnic group trying to break up. Hmm. Because everybody have lost confidence in the center. You know the scripture is complete. Say it's, to your tent. Everybody to your tent. Oh, Israel. Everybody is now singing... My town, my community, my tribe, my tribe our men. group. Yeah, let's form this. Amoteke is in the west. You hear of uh, ESN in the east. You hear about terrorism. You hear about ice sweep. You hear about healthmen. And now the center can no longer can no longer hold. These are direct consequences, and more and more is coming. So it's, we are calling our leaders to order. And uh, it is a failure of leadership in its entirety. Hmm. We pray that the Lord will help and heal our land so that this doom pervading, this uh, ominous wind that blows nobody no good hmm. will be evaded in our land. You know, somebody captured it, the essence of this. He said, when the society cannot provide for the many who are poor, then it cannot protect the few who are rich. Nobody will escape thinking that you run around. If you don't deliver the good and share the common wealth of us all to the benefit of all, don't think that in the day of doom you will be spared. They will uh, manage to flee to Jerusalem. No, no, no. Yeah, last, you escape by the whiskers. No, last two years or last year now, you know, it's almost it almost the happened. The answers, the answers, the answers something. Of, you remember so it? the rich cried. Father <laughs> <laughs> so God, just quickly, the consequences. Look at our country as a case study. You know, it pains me on a personal level. Sometimes the lethargy coming always to bemoan our wound. Why can't we get it right? Why can't God help us as a country? What can you see from this passage as we try to get to question four? Um, just like uh, Reverend Maxwell said, it mostly manifests in this country in the area of violence. Hmm. People try to to People express their, their dissatisfaction about selfish leadership brings on them by demonstrating violence. Hmm. You see people are kidnapped. You see, you see the, the leaders are not even free to walk. Free. They're not free to move about. Hmm. They, they know that the people they are leading are not so hmm. happy with them. Hmm. And any time they try to move freely this way. They move with security. They move with security because of the insecurity they you know, feel. You know, one politician challenged other fellow politicians, say, if you think you are popular, come and walk the streets of a particular state oh. without without amen. Let's know whom the people will but sing their praises, their praises or not. Uh, God indeed will help us. Amen. As much as we do not promote violence and say it is the answer to all our woes, our leaders need to step up in service provision. Exactly. Nigerians are not asking for much. Exactly. Just give us good road. Give us basic amenities of life. Give us health care so that our lives will be better. Provide support for small and medium scale enterprises 
which is the brain board that drives our economy everywhere exactly. in the world. And then we can take Over it up by ourselves. I'm calling on leadership. I'm calling on you. I'm calling on myself. Let's step up this game and make this country a better place for us all and for our posterity. What is empathy? Father and God, Reverend Amoke, as we try to conclude, what is empathy? And what are the biblical injunctions concerning it? First Corinthians chapter 13, 4 to 5, you read that for us. And then chapter 10, verse 24, Reverend Maxwell, Romans chapter 12, verse 15. And I'll read Philippians chapter 2, 4, as we try to tie up today's discussion. First Corinthians, what? First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 5, that's the gospel of love. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 and 5. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, and is not easily provoked, and thinketh not evil. Awesome. I love that word, seeketh not her own. Chapter 10, 24. Quickly, sir. Okay. First Corinthians 10, verse 10, 24. Verse 24. Let no one seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Romans 12, 15. Romans, Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Philippians 2, 4. Let each of you look not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Now, Father in God, what is empathy? And what are the biblical injunctions concerning it? All right. Empathy, I think, means having an understanding of the feelings of others. Yes, sir. Not just about yourself. Yes, sir when you you have the consciousness about the feelings of the people hmm. and you are alive to it that is empathy putting yourself in another person's yeah. shoes yes hmm. feel the way that person is feeling so that if the person is feeling good you know that yes all is well if you put the person if you put yourself in the person's shoes and you are not finding it favorable just know how it also touches you I think that is what empathy is. Empathy. And what are the biblical injunctions concerning it? As Christians, have we been called unto empathy? Yes. As Christians, we've been called, just like we read from these Bible passages, that we should think about others, not just about ourselves. Mm. Have a feeling of what the people are feeling, and then respond positively to that. Mm. So the injunction is, think more, even, about others, more than you think about yourself. Awesome. And that is the pathway to rising. You know, one of our church fathers was saying that in this kingdom, the pathway to rising is in the place of serving, serving others. others. You know, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. He said, you have heard that it was written when they were quarreling, who will be greatest among us. He said, it shall not be so among you. The one who will be the greatest among you must first of all be, be your servant. servant of all and he demonstrated it. Yes. In our Anglican tradition of Mount Ditos, they will try to demonstrate how yes. Jesus what gathered up his loins and washed the feet the of his disciples in service. Father in God, empathy, the injunctions to us as Christians, Christian leaders, Christian politicians, Christian bishops, Christian students, Christian whatever, Christian businessmen, what is the call of God on us with regards to empathy? Uh, the call of God on us is that we, we shouldn't stop by just professing it. Yes, sir. We should show mm -hmm. action, action, mm -hmm. action. Like where we read Article. in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those. Mm -hmm. So this thing is not a, a thing of a thinking alone. Mm. It's a doing thing. Exactly. Let the people see you do it. In my palace, don't say a word and stop. Go ahead to lend a helping In hand. hand. Awesome. Go ahead. Let people know that, like when Jesus was here, when the task collectors came, he asked Peter, get the fish with the golden coin. Pay for me. Pay for yourself. Hmm. Awesome. If it were today, some leaders will say, oh, go and pay for me. They came for me. 
but tomorrow they will come for Peter. Hmm. So today, he's, when he sorted out himself, he sorted out Peter, even when they did not come for him. Yes, so awesome. our leaders in every phase of life should start thinking like that. Awesome. What is good for me so, should so, also so be good, good for awesome. others. Yes. Awesome. In fact, the cardinal reason why government exists, even in our constitution, is to promote the interests and welfare of the citizenry. Any government that misses that has lost the essence of its existence. And I know that the only parameter for measuring the corruption perception index, the only parameter for measuring it, according to international bodies, is just the, a government that has lost the trust of its people and is not managing the public resources that have been entrusted into it. Once a government loses the trust of the citizen, and then there is an inkling that the resources of the public is not being managed well, the perception of corruption in that government rises. So, you are listening to us, and you are a Christian leader, and God has called you in leadership. You know, like I said, the lowest hanging fruit always cite every analogies for politicians because they've been entrusted with the mandate to serve the public. It is a call on us today as Christians not to be selfish. But to model the example of Jesus, you remember, after they've been with him in a powerful revival for three days, out of concern for them, he said, let us not send them away. They may fall by the way. Exactly. He said, let us give them something. something. And they were able to provide for them. And when they provided, the people were able, not just to be fed spiritually, but also to be fed yes. physically. Yes, Father in God, that reminds me something. In giving them that meal, he did not abuse them. Hmm. He said, let them sit down. down. If it were today, a politician, there would have been a stampede. Hmm. Dehumanizing then people. The people. And perhaps they will even get camera. That's to it. To put it that they are doing this. That they did that it. empowerment. They did that empowerment. empowerment. All for political gain. <laughs> yes. You know, politicians are a funny breed. Sometimes you see them, they start eating corn, by the way. They start frying, they start plating here, yeah. people. Then after the campaign, nothing yeah. again. You don't see them again. You don't see them after this for years. God has a lot. Our country is an interesting place. But we know, like I always say, that out of the ashes of our ruin, God will raise a new nation. Man. I see a renaissance, and that renaissance has to come from the church. Exactly. The church should be the conscience of this society. If there is any hope of redemption for our country, the church to champion the church will be the pathfinder the church will be in the front line and that's what we do on this platform conclusion the human old nature is dominated by self-interest and it is by putting of this old nature through the power of the holy spirit that selfishness can be overcome putting off of this old nature through the power of the holy spirit that selfishness can be overcome food for thought to eat alone is definitely to die ah, yeah. alone. <laughs> you know, when you eat alone. <laughs> when you eat alone, I love the local palace yeah, on your own. On your own. own. You on your own. Whatever yeah. happens, you on your own. To eat alone to is die. definitely to, to die, die alone. alone. But let us not misconstrue this. So, uh, in mm. people who have corrupt tendencies now, they will now say, come, take some more. Because so that they will blindfold the mouth of the people. They won't be yeah. able to tell, to talk. Then Please. Then it amounts to another sin. It amounts to another sin. You are now engendering and encouraging corruption. Exactly. But the essence is that the common world should be spread around. How you measure the strength of every society is in the ability, in its ability to take care of the weak and the vulnerable. Memory verse, we read together. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. We are reading together. Let, Let no one seek his own good, good but, but the good of his neighbor. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. The neighbor next to you, he may be a Christian, perhaps he may even be a Muslim, perhaps even an atheist, he doesn't even believe in God. Seek for the good of that man, seek for the good of that woman. It is in doing that that will build a society that is egalitarian. A society where our common wealth will be for the benefit of us all. We thank God for today, how far he's helped us in today's Bible study session. We are trusting that the Lord will continue to build us up via his word until we see the coming of the matter, the second advent. We are equally grateful to our resource persons for today. Reverend Amoke, thanks for coming. God bless you. 
the work of God in your hand continually will prosper. Amen. And your work even in the lives of our youths, yes. the AYF in yes. Soka Diocese, the Lord will continue to uphold you. You know, our youths Amen. are very strategic. Very, very, very strategic very. to what God will have us do in this country in the day ahead. Exactly. You know, in the course of the Jesuit Generation program that I held some months back, the Lord was able to charge up that sons of men, sons of God need to manifest, to manifest because yes. that is the earnest expectation of our creation. Gracious. Reverend Maswell, Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you for We pray to have more of you. And God. that the good Lord will continue to prosper you. Amen. And God willing. And expand the frontiers of his work in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm always proud to associate with Niger because some of us had our childhood <laughs> in Onich and then we are very active in church. So our greetings and to our brethren down there. They will. They the will Lord hear will from continue us. to prosper his work. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Niger, the mother of many, many infancies. <laughs> I remember that. Mother and nurse of many infancies. I used to be a chorister. <laughs> we used to sing that there is an anthem. The Lord indeed has spoken to us today. And we pray that the instruction he's given us, he will give us the heart of obedience to obey. Child of God, don't be selfish. Like our food for thought says, when you eat alone, you will die alone. And there is nothing that you accumulate here that you will take to the grave. Jesus said, life is much more than clothing. Life is much more than, pro, uh, than food. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and then end up losing his soul? Our commitment in the SCNM platform is to continue to preach this undiluted word of God to the utmost ends of the earth. We will see you again on this side of the divide, same time next week. Until then, Keep on living for Jesus. God bless you.